Welcome to another episode of the Two Shots Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Garcia, and we are back to start a new season. Uh, we're going to be joined here with our first in-studio guest, the one and only, you know him, you love him, Rudy Campos Jr., the host of Sweep the League. Rudy, thanks for joining us, man. No problem, Joe. It's been probably what since the draft, I think. Yeah, the NBA the draft. draft since I've been doing stuff with you and Ben, and I'm excited. I'm glad to be back finally, coming in hard like a uh, Draymond Green punch. Oh man, had to go there. Never too soon. <laughs> Never with me, you know that. Yeah, and we're going to be also be joined by our uh, basketball aficionado here, our NBA analyst, as we like to uh, call him, the one and only Benjamin Bornstein, who is a Project Spurs writer and also the host of the Project Spurs Twitter Spaces. So, Ben, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. I am ready to talk basketball. Yeah, we would have had Ben's lovely mug here up on the screen, but due to some technical difficulties, all you're going to hear is his beautiful voice. You're not going to be able to see his face. So uh, I'll, I'll make it's, sure I'll put it. It's probably better today. Yeah, I'll make sure I put a graphic up there. Well, me, me and Rudy will come up with something real nice for you, man. <laughs> no, very excited for you to make me look like something very Halloween-y. Yeah, exactly. It is, the, it is the season of Halloween after all. So we're going to go ahead and start getting into this. We're going to talk a little bit of uh, Spurs news here. The, the team announced that Zach Collins has entered the NBA's concussion protocol following the game against the Pelicans. Uh, he did not travel with the team, unfortunately, so that means that he is going to be sitting out tonight's game against the Utah Jazz. It's probably for the best, too. You know, let him recoup and recover. It is preseason, after all, and you're going to want him as as a backup there uh, for one Yaga Portal when the season does uh, resume. So more than likely, it, it doesn't bode well for one San Antonio Spurs since they have been winless, Rudy through this whole preseason. I think the tank's starting early, man. I think they're, they're preparing the fans for what's to come. What do you think? Oh, definitely, man. I mean, if, if you expected them to win a title this season, I've got oceanfront property in Arizona for you. <laughs> if you expected them to actually be a legit playoff contender, I've even got more property for you. It, it's, you know, it's preseason. I get it. You're, you're not really... You're not really getting much out of preseason. You know, you have guys like Primo, you have guys like Keldon that are out. So you're not really getting the full brunt of the San Antonio Spurs uh, roster right now. But going into the season, you had to prepare yourself, man. Like Celine Dion said, my heart will go on. That should be on your Spotify <laughs> list for sure. I should have mentioned that. But it's just going to be it's going to be a rough season. It's going to be a tough season for the San Antonio Spurs. Like I've said before, just sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, watch the development of these kids. And it's just going to be a fun-filled ride, man. Yeah. Well, we'll see. You know, Spurs Twitter is going to burn down. It's, a, it's been season. burning for like five years already. Yeah, I think somebody lit the match, uh, even in the off season, yeah. <laughs> once Dejounte got traded. So yeah, when do we get the final explosion here? Oh, it's coming, Ben. Brace yourself. Brace when they yourself. when they get the third pick in the draft next oh, yeah, year. Man. Oh, well, that's that when happens, you can't even begin to describe how upset this Twitter I, space is. Yeah, that's be. the explosion we've been waiting for. Yeah. And another another note here is that the San Antonio Spurs did announce that they also waived uh, Tommy Cousy, which I, I don't think that's a big surprise there. We kind of knew that he was going to be the yeah. odd man out, didn't really play a lot of minutes. Coach Pop did him a solid. I think he played 11 minutes in his last outing and basically got his walking papers. I said, no, no, no. He took like 20 shots in yeah. that fourth quarter, all from three. I mean, I, I mean you get him up. I mean, you just well, got to right? shoot, Rudy. You know, I, I took my glasses off for a second, and it looked like Manu Ginobili for a little bit on the court. <laughs> oh, oh, I was no. sorry. My heart was beginning to race. I thought Manu had enough. I said, forget this. I'm getting the shorts and the jersey back on and playing ball for the Spurs. He put on a, a Tommy Cousy mask just to yeah. come out. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, but uh, Coach Pop told him, no need to board the plane, young one. You're, you're done. You know, so they gave him his walking papers. Hopefully, the guy can go ahead and get a job somewhere else in the NBA. You know, you'd hate to see anybody lose their job, especially now that we're starting to get closer and closer to the holiday season. So yeah. hopefully he lands on his feet somewhere, man. Good koozie, luck koozie. We can, that should, he, he should go make some koozies with, you know, called the koozie, koozie with his Why big old mug on you everybody all your great ideas for freaking, uh, man? You know, I, I've got them all copyrighted <laughs> and trademarked, so I'll, I'll get a penny for every, you know, koozie dime he makes or for something. For every koozie, frankly, koozie. Frankly, he should be teaming up with Bob Koozie. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's awesome. See, this is why Ben is here, not just for prospect looks and basketball talk. He's a marketing genius. Yeah. That's why. We don't have him on here just for his looks. 
No, you you have me on despite my looks. <laughs> <laughs> you want a fun Ben? Let's get a couple drinks in him, man. He oh, he opens right up. Oh, oh yeah. No. We yeah. On, we we I think all three of us have been down that drunk road on podcast <laughs> before. So but but nobody does it as good as Rudy, man. Uh, those those days. The good are old awesome. days, Rudy. The good old days. <laughs> We still miss the rated R early days, the early days of the podcast. I, I'm looking at their video, Joe, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I actually fit in the screen now. I, oh, yeah. I never used to be able to fit in the screen back then, back in the drunk podcast days. I'm, I'm actually proud of myself. I fit in the yeah, screen. We're now. proud of you, too, man. You're looking good. <laughs> Rudy came in looking good, man. He's lost about like much 100 better pounds. better than Brian Windhorst. Oh, oh Lord, oh, dude. That dude God. can't even fit in his square. Come on. That's what I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> even when he had both fingers up, it's like they got to do the... The wide angle, the wide, wide angle for him, man. I thought ESPN had hired Jonah Hill when I first saw him <laughs> oh, on TV. Oh, God. <laughs> Poor Brian, man. I'm a big boy, too, so I shouldn't be talking. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Spurs preseason takeaways. You know, we've, uh, like I said, Spurs have played three games. They're soon to play, play their fourth game tonight against the Utah Jazz. And through these three games here, Give us some takeaways. What have you seen that you maybe like, don't like? Uh, let us know what you're thinking, Rudy. You know, I, I, what I what I like about this team is that, A, it's a very young team. I mean, you've got guys like Sohan. You've got, you know, Primo, which we haven't seen. We haven't seen Keldon yet. We saw Vassell. What I liked from Vassell in the first game was that he just inserted himself into that game. And you could tell he's the guy that, you know what, I'm taking that next step up. I'm taking the leadership role here as much as I can. He's going to be a scorer for the Spurs. But what I also liked was the guys that they brought in. I mean, you got to see uh, Isaiah Roby a little bit there. And I like the way he's playing. You finally got your first glimpse of Dominic Barlow, who I've been team Dominic, you know, ever since uh, we did the draft on draft night when I saw that, you know, uh, you know he, was, he was coming to the Spurs. I mean, Dominic Barlow's a kid that out of team, I believe it was overtime elite. I mean, average 14.9 points, just under six boards a game. You saw the kind of excitement he can bring to that squad and i mean he's not going to get major minutes but he's a young guy he's only 19 he can develop with the rest of the roster what i've seen really is just what i've expected i've, yeah. I've seen exactly what this season is going to be like it's going to be a lot of blowouts it's going to be a lot of heartbreaks it may even get a couple of wins there that are like okay no problem but it's going to be a lot of losing and i've prepared myself for this for a very long time because i've lived through it one time already you know pre-david robinson era you were there too <laughs> we've all lived us old fellas have lived through it and we're getting back to it so i just expect a very long season from what i've seen in the preseason is exactly what i'm going to see in the regular season i think the spurs uh lowest win uh, total for for a season was somewhere in the neighborhood of 26 20, wins. i was gonna say 20 yeah, 26. 26, 26 wins, points. and that was the the year that both Sean Elliott was, I think he was hurt. We had David Robinson injured. We brought back old Dominique Wilkins, you know. He was our leading scorer that year. Yeah, he was our leading scorer. He yeah. was basically playing in the Euro League, and they went ahead and enticed him back into the NBA. And, I mean, he was already at the waning part of his career, but he still mm -hmm. was able to put up a, a ton of points for the San Antonio Spurs. Like you said, their leading scorer. Yeah. Uh, and it was the year, the infamous year, that we had no business getting the the number one pick overall, but you know, we fucked around and found out and <laughs> we, yeah. got, we got Tim Duncan. <laughs> we have that we're, graph. We're anyway. long enough. <laughs> you live long enough in the mess around era. You you end up in the find out era. And that's what the Spurs did. Yeah. So I don't think lightning's going to strike twice though. I mean, you, you would hope it would, but I mean, we're, we're being honest here. I, I got to say too, one of the things that set twi Spurs Twitter uh, ablaze here was the, I guess the, the, the talk was all about Dominique Barlow and Blake Wesley, you know, and the, the minutes that were uh, given to, to said players. You know, you would have thought, uh, I guess, uh, Wes, uh, Wesley was going to get, uh, I guess, the majority of, not, not the majority, but the less of the minutes because um, we had, what, Malachi Brenham, I believe we also had him in the mix yeah. as well. But, you know, they, they just thought that there would be more minutes to go around. But hasn't been the case. I mean, what do you what do you take on what's your take on that? You know, I, I'm going to let Ben handle a lot on this one, too. But my what I want to give really, you know, the insight on Wesley and we Ben and I talked about it on draft night when the Spurs drafted him. You know, he's a guy that it's going to take a little bit of time. He's going to take some time to develop. He 
he plays not reckless, but he's really quick. He's really out of control. For Blake Wesley, because he had a great summer, I think fans are expecting that to transition to the NBA. Well, summer ball is not NBA vet ball, and you can kind of see the struggles he's having right now. He's really not controlled. It, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Blake Wesley in Austin for a while, and that's where I think he probably will go. I I don't see him there. I think Malachi Branham, who, again, we talked about him on draft night, he was a lottery pick. He was supposed to be a lottery pick, and the Spurs were lucky enough to grab him. This kid can play, and he's going to be a part of the rotation. He may not get major minutes at first, but he will get you know some good minutes and be a major part of the rotation. I just think Wesley... It's probably going to be in Austin for majority of the year. He might he might get the call up every now and then, but you know as far as that goes, you know Ben, I don't know if I'm on the right track with Wesley, but I mean even the great summer he had hasn't really transitioned to the preseason, and it kind of makes me feel that he's going to Austin. What do you think, Ben? What do you what do you have to say in regards to all this? It's tough because Blink Wesley is playing more of a natural point guard position than Malachi Branham is. Branham has been more of a two. So there, that's the biggest difference. And like with some of the injuries to Primo, some other guys who just aren't playing in the preseason, Blake Wesley has kind of had a long leash and I think they're going to continue to give him one because they just want to see what he can do. At Notre Dame, he had to do everything. He had to score. He had to find guys open. He had to get to the free throw line, he, he, all the things. Right, you're playing on an NBA team. You were picked 25th. You're not. You're not a guy that the Spurs are like. We have to dedicate a super large amount of time to. You're a project for us. If things work out great, obviously you will be compensated down the road appropriately. But for the most part, we have Josh Primo. We have Trey Jones. We have two guys we like. We're just trying to find another guy who we might like, and you would be the third guy. So I think that's part of it. Malachi Branham, another one of those guys who's more of a wing. He's He plays probably a little bit beyond his years, and he played that way at Ohio State. Um, you know, Rudy said it really well. Basically, Blake Wesley's kind of out of control. He's not, he's not playing within the system yet, or he's not. He doesn't. He shouldn't really have the green light to kind of freelance and do that kind of stuff yet. He's not Manu, but uh, Malachi Branham playing more so within the system knows his role, trying to play it well. I think that's what's giving him some more minutes and probably what will keep him in San Antonio and put Blake Wesley in Austin for now. But I can see both those guys getting shuttled back and forth quite a bit. Do you think Wesley can make a strong case for himself? coming off that bench, maybe being a backup uh, point guard? Absolutely. With the way the guard space looks right now, I mean, Romeo Langford, very much a shooting guard. Um, Devin Vassell, mostly a shooting guard. Josh Richardson, a shooting guard. Trey Jones is probably the only pure point guard on this team right yeah. now. And, you know, they're throwing Josh Primo in there as kind of an experiment to see if he can play on ball, distribute, be that guy i'm not sure he can if he proves that he can't you have an opening for blake wesley right there to kind of sneak in and maybe become the number two point guard at some point yeah so that, i would think that that's probably going to be the natural uh, su succession here is that they're going to wind up uh having to <laughs> to play uh, blake wesley as the backup point guard to one trey jones i would think at this juncture they've already seen enough out of trey jones to basically say at this point, you know, he's going to be your, your starting point guard for this, you know, for this season. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind about that. Um, but I mean, there's just no reason for him not to be. Yeah, there, there's no mm -hmm. reason for him not to be. I mean, from what we've seen with from him and it's been, you know, limited minutes, of course, because it's preseason. I mean, he, he's doing a decent enough job. You know, it's it's just like Rudy says, it's going to be a long season. You know, <laughs> if you if you're not yeah. winning, if, if you're not if you're not losing, you're not trying at this point. The, the point is not to win a whole lot of games. That, that's the mantra of this season. You want to go ahead and tank for Wemby. You know, or like Ben likes to say, what do you say? Wobbly for Wemby? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I might have pissed off people uh, on Spurs Twitter a little bit. I mean, it wasn't a knock to Wemby. 
Wemby checks off every single box you want. So you do want to, if you're going to tank and that's the player you want, you want to get him, obviously. But if you're drafting two, there is absolutely nothing wrong with Scoot. Nothing wrong at all. Because if you can't fill that big man spot, you do need a point guard. Trey's Trade, not going to take you further than what Trey's going to take you. Scoot yeah. is a guy that can definitely, as you saw against Wimby, he can get points. He can make things happen. He His basketball IQ is phenomenal. And I say that because if you watch him play, he already knows what he wants to do before he does it. Yeah. And you don't really see that at that age that he's at right now. Yeah, he so. goes in controlled and with purpose. His control is like chaotic yeah. in a good way. I mean, the kid can get to the basket. He's an instant game changer. I mean, talking to, you know, a couple of the guys that I've talked to, it's just they're I've heard guys even more sold on Scoot than Wimby. And it's it's so I'm one close. of them. It's I'm so one close. Of them. I don't I mean, and Ben's got probably more details into these guys, but I mean, for me, I it's so close. I mean, these two players you've never seen probably in good guy. I have no idea how many years, you know, maybe the bird and magic draft possibly yeah. since you've had two guys that are going to come out that are instant. You know what? These guys are hall of fame bound instant franchise change players. Yeah. Franchise changing players. No doubt. And the one thing that I, I come to, and I, I've asked Ben about this numerous times, I'm going to ask him again. I'm going to ask you it, it's longevity. You know, and, and notoriously, when you go back and you look at the history of a big man, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you look at what happened with, let's say, um, Yao Ming, for example, when you're that tall, you have issues with your feet, you yeah. know, and with your joints as far as your knees go, even ankles. You know, look what happened with Yao Ming. His NBA career was shortened because he kept breaking his foot. And once he broke it, he kept breaking it again and again and again. Uh, that's the only concern that I have with, with Victor Wembeyama. But other than that, I mean, of course, no matter how long his career is going to be, if he comes to the San Antonio Spurs instantly, we're going to be the talk of the town again. You know, we're yeah. going to be getting those national games. I think the Spurs only got like one or two national games. It was an Alamo Dome game. Yeah. I think that was a national game. One, the one sole game that they have. I think they might have two, if I remember correctly. But that's it. You know, we're not getting nationally televised games anymore. But if you want, you know, to be attractive to free agents and have players of merit come over here and want to play in san antonio you, they need to get excited about something wemby will do that for you and so will scoot you know so the spurs don't necessarily get the first pick they drop to two you get scoot henderson that's not a bad thing either i'd be happy with either one of them yeah. you know if you're a san antonio spurs fan after this season you're going to be happy with anything that can help you win you know <laughs> let's be honest ben bornstein can help you win yeah well ben <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe ben. not on the court. Uh, <laughs> but I got to ask you, too, what do you think of the, the longevity of one Victor Wembeyano? Do you think his uh, his length and, you know, of course, the, the feet and knee injuries that big men are prone to at his size uh, will kind of cut his uh, NBA career short? You're talking about Yao Ming, who is much heavier yeah. than Wembeyama. Um, and if you really want to go far back, you can talk about Sam Bowie. But he was also hiding injuries when he was taken first overall, um, which was not good. And you can also talk about Ralph Sampson, but Wimbin Yama doesn't move like any of those guys. He is so much more mobile than any of those guys. He spends, he has an entire team, and he has a doctor, and he has medical professionals who are basically stretching him out, doing all the plyometrics, and they are working on him for 45 minutes before he does any sort of basketball activity. Yeah. They are doing everything in their power to make him last as long as possible. And that was part of the reason that he really didn't play that many minutes when he was playing for Tony Parker's team. Because Tony Parker, well, I guess the coach, the coach pretty much said, listen, we know you're not going to be here for much longer. You're going to be a top two pick in the NBA draft. We're not here to try and run you into the ground. We're not here to try and get you hurt. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna showcase you enough so you can show people what you can do, and then we're gonna get you off the floor. Um, those two exhibition games against G League Ignite were the exception where they said these are the two games where you go all out, you show these people what you can do, 
you know, you alleviate any fears they have. You you emphasize all of the strengths that they think you have, and you just go out and play. And he did that. He he exceeded those games exceeded the hype of what everyone had for them when they were announced. That's how good those games were. And that's how good Wembenyama was. I mean, he scored. I think it was seventy three points over the course of two games. It was wow. nothing to laugh at. And he was amazing. His arms were everywhere. That so, that they were. <laughs> his, yeah, his recovery. To, to me, I I don't have concerns about his longevity. He's had. He hasn't had any serious enough injuries that they've required surgery. It's mostly rehabbing and some rest, and that's it. And those have been addressed. Yeah, and he's so, so young. For anyway. me, I, right, he's incredibly young. So as long as he comes to the draft. And his medicals check out, you're fine. Yeah, we're going to start salivating as a, at, a, at a Spurs uh, championship, another one. <laughs> I mean, the, the Spurs, I mean, Spurs Twitter, yeah, you have every right to be excited for Wimby. You're, you're talking to guy, and again, you know, looking at it overall, his you're, you're right about his longevity. I mean, you think, good God, guys that tall, you know, you think Manu Bowl, yeah, really thin, real frail. Sean Bradley, thin, frail. You look at Yao Ming, bigger guy, but had problems with his knees and you know his feet and stuff. Shaquille O'Neal, so, too. You know, even Shaq as well. But which you Shaquille got- O'Neal let himself go. <laughs> yeah, he did. He, I'm just saying, if he had let him, if he had stayed in shape, even remotely close to those Orlando days, he probably could have lasted another year or two and really put up. Numbers. When you're define, you define let him go, let himself go. Are we talking Sean Camp? Let him go after the lockout season. I mean, he, he got bigger in L.A., but he was still able to move and do all the things he was able to do in Orlando. But like, And he stayed in shape in Miami basically because Pat Riley said, I can't play you if you don't stay in shape. They have, Miami Heat have an incredibly strict um, lifting and yeah. running and conditioning regimen. It was Boston, um, right? Pat Riley is known <laughs> for this. Like you, He says, you know, if you're a big man, you have to be under this body fat percentage. And like Shaq still couldn't get under that number, even though he was trying his butt off. Like, you know, he got to Phoenix, Cleveland, Boston. Like, he clearly was not the same Shaq. And part of it was getting older, but part of it was he wasn't taking care of himself as well as he should have. Yeah. So married life does that to me. <laughs> it does. But as we move on here for, for another segment here that we're going to get into, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Doug McDermott. So, you know, there was some reaction here from Coach Pop. On Doug McDermott, Doug McDermott, after he went ahead and had back-to-back 14-point 14, 14 games. Um, and, you know, this is him coming off the bench. And Coach Pop kind of mentioned, you know, that might be his role uh, coming in, you know, for the for the upcoming season. And to quote Coach Pop, he said, we want to see him uh, come off the bench and add and add to, you know, add to us uh, some offense. You know, give us a push, a spark, a jump. That's a, a major skill. He knows it. It he likes it, and who wouldn't like to be able to to have the green light uh, just to go ahead and go and shoot? So my question is to you guys: Doug McDermott coming off the bench, will he be that anchor for that second unit? I mean, they really don't have a lot of people on that second unit. You know, uh, Doug Doug McDermott could be one of them. Josh Richardson could be the other one. So that second unit, having you know maybe two veterans there, could could Dougie McBuckets be a, an anchor on, uh, on the second unit. What do you think, Rudy? It's confirmed. You got to get him the number 20. I mean, he's <laughs> he's going to be the new Ginobili coming off the bench oh, and scoring. You heard it here first. Yeah, you heard it here. Give him the number 20. Now, you know, I, I like the move because you – Pop's always been that coach where he wants some kind of fire and electricity off the bench, hence why Manu Ginobili went to the bench to provide that spark yep. off the bench. And a guy like Doug, I mean – very streaky shooter, but when he gets hot, he gets super hot. And I think with him coming off the bench is going to be more beneficial. I mean, it just sometimes when you're coming off the bench, guys like, hey, Jamal Crawford's another one. I mean, these guys that can score the the basketball coming off the bench is actually a benefit for them. So I yeah. actually like the fact that Doug's coming off the bench. If he's fine with it, by all means, hey, continue to do it. He's one of those guys where I still think come trade deadline – they're going to be knocking on the Spurs door for him. So it kind of tells me also that they're kind of conserving him a little bit more and not starting him, having him come off the bench. He may not get a whole bunch of minutes in every single game, 
But, you know, it's just kind of like this is going to be your role right now because I really do think come trade deadline, he's one of those guys that's going to probably end up being moved. So it's kind of like, you know, making sure the career yeah. is good and, you know, the season's going to go good. He has no major injury, stuff like that. Yeah, because at the end of the day, the, the game's all about picks for the San Antonio Spurs, you know? Yeah. And they're going to go ahead and trade their veterans such as, you know, Doug Mc, McDermott or Josh Richardson. There's even talk. There's been a lot of talk about even Jacopo. Yeah. He's going to be able to, you know, make the entire season he might be traded as well, you know? So if the Spurs look to rebuild, I mean, they want to go ahead and keep these uh, pieces intact. Mm -hmm. So what better way to go ahead and, and think about the longevity of your key trade pieces in your veterans than to have them come in off the bench? You, you know? know, I really, just real quick, before I get a bit, I, I don't think, something tells me Jakob is not going to be moved at all this year. You don't I think, think so? I think he's going to stay with the Spurs the entire year. I think he's comfortable with the system. I think Pop and the coaches that really love him here. He does the things you want him to do at that center spot. He's not Joel Embiid. He's not, you know, Jokic, but he's better than a lot of the guys out there. Yeah, right he's now. been a consistent so, center over the course of the last couple of seasons. He's a great, a terrific locker room guy. Yeah. So as you get these players developing, I think Jakob's the one, the one constant that you're going to see with the Spurs. And if they do get Wemby, that's when I think you might see them move on. From he's Jacob expendable. <laughs> yeah, that's when it happens. Yeah. Well. Not only him, but uh, Zach Collins as well. I've heard a lot of chatter about Zach Collins, and Spurs fans are like, "Let's get him." Some of the Spurs fans are like, "Let's get him off this this team." And I'm, I, my rebuttal is, "Who else are you going to go out and get?" The the, the Spurs mm. took an, a gamble on Zach Collins. They got him at a cheap price. He can play, you know, good minutes coming off the bench. He's a good backup to one Yaka Portal. So if you want to get rid of him, who else are you going to get for that price? I saw Zach at Best Buy. I, I really wanted to give him some seven up and Vix and just make it through a season with him somehow. What are you gonna say, Sana Sana Colita? Yeah, de rana? I was I was trying to rub the egg on his forehead, but I couldn't jump that high. <laughs> give him some some Vix and El Sprite, El Sprite, yeah, El Sprite. <laughs> so, uh, Ben, let's go ahead and go to you. I mean, what do you think about this move, uh, bringing off, uh, you know, Doug Mc, McDermott off the bench? You think he's going to be one of the anchors for that second unit? Yeah, he has to be. There's just – I don't think there's room for him in the starting rotation, mostly because I think that's going to end up being Trey Jones, Pirtle, Vassell, Keldon Johnson, and you throw throw a four in there. It doesn't matter. Maybe it's Isaiah Roby for all we know. but Or maybe it's even Zach Collins playing at the four. Who knows? But – I just I think he's better coming off the bench. Like you guys said, you preserve some minutes for him. You you know if you need to if he's hot that night, you extend him. You throw him some some more minutes. It's fine, and he becomes a good trade chip. You know he has a he has a decent salary that you can match with other people. Or you could get picks for like you were saying, stockpile the picks. That's what they did with the with the Hawks trade. But the issue with Pirtle is. I think this is the last year of his contract. So if you're going to make a move, you have to trade him this year or you have to have preemptively decided you're going to extend it. You're going to try and sign him in the offseason. So if he doesn't get moved, I think it's the Spurs signaling, yeah, we're going to have Pirtle, but we're also we're going to have – we're still going to take Wemby. You have to take Wemby if you mm -hmm. get the first pick. Yeah. But, you know, we, we want Pirtle here. Like Rudy was saying, gray locker room guy good presence, a great vet, and he's a very good defensive big. He can help he can help Wembenyama with some of the finer points of playing in the NBA as a, as a big. Um, and maybe they even play them together because Wembenyama can go out and float out on the perimeter and play defense on threes and fours. You let Pirtle stay at five and you can kind of move guys down the line elsewhere. But, yeah, I think um, – I think McDermott coming off the bench is the move. I think it's a no-brainer. Um, I just hope he shows value and can and, – and, you know, if they trade him, they get good value in return. Yeah, it's going to be an audition, you know. <laughs> Basically, hey, look at the assets we have for this, uh, you know. Well, for, I mean, this veterans, is, is going to be an audition for a lot of guys. Yeah. I mean, if, depending on who they keep, I think they have to cut two more guys. But, I mean, this is a make-or-break year for Isaiah Roby. This is – Potentially a make or break year for Wieskamp. This is a year that Romeo Langford has to prove that he can stay in the league and be helpful on a team that needs shooting. 
Yeah. Um, you know, and depending on if guys get moved or not, Dominic Barlow could find himself moving up in the rotation and actually getting some minutes at forward. Hope so. Yeah. I really so, hope so. As we go ahead and move into our next segment, I think we've all kind of answered this one as well. But if the Spurs don't at this juncture, at this in the, at the end of this season, if they don't have a losing season and they're not getting a top three or top five pick, would you consider the season a bust, Rudy? Yes. They see, I already knew Ben was going to say yes. He wants to take for Wemby. That that talk with Ben started like when the when the season ended last year. Just, I think, yeah, just I think sim like the season for God's sake. Yeah, I think it was like two years ago that everybody was talking for Wemby or something. But I, you know, I I hate to uh, I hate to play both sides, and I'm really not going to play both sides. I mean, is it a uh... is it a crappy season <laughs> if we don't get Wemby and tank for him? I think yeah, it is. I mean, it, it sucks because you you got a franchise guy there. You've got you know, like I said, a future Hall of Famer, barring any injuries. You got him, and you've got Scoot there. So one and two is definitely the motto this year: grab one or two. But I mean, you hate to see guys go out there and just not try. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Man. And it's like no, that's but that's the beauty of this Rudy this team is so young they're going to refuse to give up in games but it's just not going to be enough they're just not going to have enough but they are going to try and they are going to get better and they're going to see progress it's just going to come in the form of 23 wins yeah and, and this is what I've been telling everybody even going back to last last season I told them prepare yourself because this season the Spurs are about to embark on the classiest tank job that the NBA has ever seen. It's not going to be like they're going to go outright and just make it so obvious that they are tanking. It's just going to be by well, natural selection. And, and that brings this up because this is the whole, this is the question I've been dying to ask you guys on the tanking thing. Cause I mean, I've been on other podcasts and it doesn't really come up now uh, that during those, but when it comes to tanking, if the young guys show promise and it's leading to a win or very close wins, then does the coaching staff say, let me pull back some when you'll get that? Oh, well, you know what? We're going to go ahead and throw a wheeze camp from Austin in there in the fourth quarter. You know, we're only down by five. And then oh, let's throw Joe in there. Let's throw so-and-so in there. It's like, wait a minute. Does that, then does I say, does the coaching staff buy into the tank? Intervene. You'd have no. to intervene. I mean, because you're right, Ben. You're not going to have guys quitting. Yeah. But, but the, the no the staff the staff refuses to to outright lose like that. They're not they're not going to mess with rotations more so than normal anyway. Coach Bob and, likes and, to mess with his. Rotation. They're just going to have Jakob right, jacking up threes in the fourth. I mean, <laughs> shoot your shot, Jakob. <laughs> but it's it, the coach Bob has already said that he enjoys coaching these guys. He's going to coach them hard and they like being coached that way. So mm. I, I don't see that so much being an issue. You know, it's, it's the front office's job to put the team in a position to either go through your rebuild properly, which in this case means a full on tank or put them in a position to fully contend for titles and consistent playoff berths not where the Spurs are right now. So, you know, there's, there, there may be friction between coaching staff and the front office because obviously the coaches are always going to coach to win. The front office is not always making moves to win right now. Yeah. Um, and the GM knows better than to tell Pop to lose on purpose. He, that's just not going to happen. So, um, you know, he's, he's going to be hands-off in that regard. But the... I mean, if you look at the talent of this team, and people have said this and going back to last season, you know, there's no clear all-star on this team right now, especially because DeJounte Murray is gone. Mm -hmm. There's you, you have a nice lot of guys who are great role players, potentially guys who can break out and be a little more than that. So you need to go out and get your franchise or your cornerstone guy. And you, have to, you have to lose to do that this year. Yeah. yeah. So so it's not going to be a coming out party. It's not going to be like Antonio Brown in a pool, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Definitely not going to be that kind of coming out party. Then. 
That's not a party I want. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think that's a party anybody and wants. The, 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 the woman in the video didn't want no part of that either. I mean, Antonio, man, come on, dude. So Somebody's got to do something about him, dude. He's, he's running wild. <laughs> he's running wild. <laughs> anybody desperate for a wide receiver out there? No. He's available. <laughs> no, not even Jerry's that crazy. Jerry knows better. Jerry's got bigger yeah, problems on his hand. <laughs> oh yeah, Jerry. Jerry's got. He Jerry talked a lot this morning. I don't know if you heard it on one hundred five point three, the fan. No, I didn't. His handlers had to kind of say, it's, "It's time to get Jerry off off the air already, man." It's been time for a long time to get Jerry. Jerry, off Jerry, Jerry was spitting gold today, man. Oh boy, he was preaching, and the Cowboys fans were were there just I, in the in the stands, just you know, ready to absorb the I, word of Jerry. I gotta ask Ben this because Ben Ben's in Atlanta, right, Ben? My mistake. Yes. Okay. Hot Atlanta. He's so, hot Atlanta. So being that I'm a a hot Atlanta Falcon fan, what was the I'm talk so up there about the sack? Oh, oh boy. Um, <laughs> the discourse I had to listen to was very much everybody was upset, and they should be. Mm -hmm. And then the worst thing that could have happened was that play last night. Oh yeah, Monday night football game. Oh yeah, it was a very similar play. And basically, guys got called for breathing on the quarterback. It's absurd. Very much so. I mean, the the refs, some, they bet on that game, dude. Somebody bet on that it, game. It's It's been getting much, much worse. It used to be you could tackle guys. It's not a problem. You can push them after a, you know, a light push after the throw. Now it's you can't, you can't even get close to a guy. I mean, we're talking about Chandler Jones. Clean tackle, ball is still in the quarterback's hand. Yeah. He snags the ball from the quarterback as he's tackling him. Like, if anything, we should be giving Chandler Jones 15 extra yards <laughs> for the athleticism required to make that play. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? If there was ever referees betting, I'm not saying there were, betting on the games, it was all weekend. <laughs> it was all this weekend. There were so many bad calls this weekend. There were some people that got really rich off of these bad calls. Look at what Tom. What happened with Tom Brady? I mean, come on. I said man. it last night on sweep on the sweep the league. You know, Tom Brady's he. It's it's just pillow talk he's for Tom Brady. You can't even breathe he's on had him. Those man. Refs in his pocket for a long time. Well, he's gonna need to make some money because he's going through a divorce. <laughs> so he's gonna need to make some extra money. Amen. Yeah, but Giselle doesn't need anything from him. She makes more than he does. If anything, it's, he might be it's suing the her. It's the principality behind True. the whole thing, man. It's. What what's your half of yours belongs to me, you know? Yeah. Unless he got a prenup, you know. So, but well, I mean, if that's she, the case. He should be taking half of hers. She makes more. I know she does, but it's it's the principle behind the whole so thing. So with man. his divorce, does he is he still the all time leading quarterback Super Bowl winner? Because doesn't she get half of his rings? So ah. he goes back down to like <laughs> three or something. This guy. <laughs> He's hey, good. I like I like technicalities, man. Formalities and technicalities. You know, she, she, he gets she, visitation rights to the rings. She, I bet you if she oh, did wow. take the ring, she'd probably give them to charity or something. She'd give them to Antonio charity. Brown. Yeah, she, <laughs> he, would, he would give her all of the AFC rings. That's it. Oh, Lord. But you know. She's the Super Bowl rings. <laughs> I told Rudy what we're not really going to do with the, the biggest winners and losers of the weekend. I think we sports. just did with the We kind of did, you know. The NFL. And we cheating. did that. We had a little bit of talk. But to me, the biggest winners uh, of this weekend were one. The Seattle Mariners. I know that's Geo's team. Yes. Yeah. They Massive. came back from an eight one deficit. Massive. You know? That was incredible. incredible, man. And the other big winners on the weekend, you gotta go ahead and tip your hat to. The Longhorns. I mean, who thought that they would come in there and just shut down OU the way they did? Their their defense has been remarkable this season. And it's just it's not their fault that the offense just kind of sputters, but with Ewers back, I mean, you saw, and I'm not going to say they would have been undefeated had he not got injured, but they definitely would have beat Tech. I think they probably would have oh, came don't out. Don't say over that. That's Wesley I, Wesley Perkins' team. So I'm sorry, <laughs> Wes, but I mean, they they would have beaten Tech. I know that the Bama game it kind of is back and forth, but like I tell people with Bama, the Horns still had the game won. It was just a bad call at the end and not in their favor. So it. It's kind of hard to say with yours. You know, Bad calls are part of the game, Rudy. And we saw it all weekend. So, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, listen, you have your winners. Let me give you some losers, okay? All right. The Mets, huge losers. <laughs> oh, yeah. But but yeah. the Mets have been losing, Ben. They've been losing, you, though. 
They, you want to talk about a team with a 28 to three lead. That was the Mets. Mm -hmm. They were up, what was it? 10 and a half games in the NL East. And they still end up coming in second to the Braves, which means you then have to play in your wild card and you lose the wild card series, even though you're supposed to be the superior team. Losers. NFL. Biggest losers. Anybody who had to watch TNF. That Thursday night football game oh, was a travesty God, and it was not God. football. Hey, but then you um, got extra extra time added on to that as well. Extra salt in the water. Why? That, I was going to say, the only thing that is is a punishment. <laughs> yeah. All right, losers, college football, Texas A&M. Jimbo Fisher, oh, no man. loser. No yeah. loser. Well, you're not lying there, man. I, I got to say, and uh, you know, another loser that I'd like to go ahead and, and, and bring up here real quick, because my nephew, he's a big Green Bay Packers fan. Ooh. Oh, boy. One of the oh. biggest losers for me in my eyes, especially because my nephew loves – Sid loves him some Aaron Rodgers. They got beat by the lowly Giants. You talk about the lowly Giants. They're four. The four and one. Right I know, so. but I'm just saying. I mean, you would have thought, you know, Green Bay would have been the superior team. No problem. You got Aaron Rodgers on there. Yeah. Work yeah, is but magic. They don't have Daniel Jones. True that. You know, and the Giants. I gotta say, man, I, I was surprised that the NFC East is as stacked as it has been. Usually, it's the trash bowl of of the NFL, and now you have. The Eagles, who are the lone undefeated team in the NFL, mm -hmm. you have the Giants, and then you have the, the the Cowboys. Who would have thought that the Cowboys losing das Dak Prescott in that first game against Tampa Bay would have been a, a godsend to us, you know, Cowboys fans? I, I a NFC South, I maybe the trash division of football this year? I don't know, man. The, the Eagles are looking like they might be a, a bona fide Super Bowl contender there. I mean, they're looking like they're, they're one of the, the best East. teams in, in the NFL. I'm talking about NFC, NFC South, though. You're talking about the Panthers just fired their coach. Yeah. Yeah, they've not been as fired. good as they hope to be. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else is even. New the Orleans. Saints have been okay. The Falcons uh, don't have the, the fourth, balls to the pull the Falcons Ritter terrible. trigger because I really like to see Desmond Ritter. Well, right well didn't now. you want him to oh, get rid of Matt both. Ryan? They got rid of Matt Ryan. No, they got rid of Matt Ryan, yeah. and yeah, they still the brought point. in a horrible quarterback <laughs> to replace Matt Ryan when you go and draft. You know, Marcus doesn't Ritter. Ritter. Yeah, Marcus Mariota. Like, I mean, <laughs> just the guy. Ritter, sling the thing. Hey, man, you're going to tell him you saw the documentary? <laughs> no. no. Hey, I watched that documentary, dude. I mean, like, a lot of questions after that, Rudy. A lot yeah. of questions, man. There's a lot of questions. There's tons <laughs> of questions. And, you know, I've, I've kind of been watching documentaries lately in... I'm starting to question a lot of stuff in life, man. I'm like, all right, um, I'm just gonna sit behind my computer and not do anything like at all. It's getting pretty crazy out there. Yeah. For any reason. So as we move into our last segment, we're just gonna go through this real quick here, and a little bit of entertainment, you know, news that we'd like to bring to everybody. Uh, I actually don't watch a lot of streaming uh, shows per se because I don't, I don't have time, but. I did make time, and I sat down with the wife over on Saturday. She was very happy because I was actually watching. I watched two horror movies with her. That's her her thing. She loves horror movies. She watches them almost every other day. I'm already burned out on horror movies. I hate them to death. Mm. But I did watch the new Hellraiser that was on on Hulu. It's part of their Halloween uh, special that they have, and actually, it wasn't that bad. I mean, it it's not the original, but they did an admirable job, and it was an the the, hor the most horrible remake that I've ever seen. It was okay. It was I give it a three out of five. Now we're gonna talk about Werewolf by Night. My wife didn't know what to expect going in. You know, she's she never even heard of this. Me being a big you know Marvel fan, I, I've read the books, yeah. not the books, but the comics because Werewolf by Night was one of the the foes uh, that Moon Knight would face on a regular. So I was mm -hmm. a big fan of Moon Knight. Werewolf by Night. I, I love what they actually did with it, and the violence that was in in this uh, Disney uh, show. You know, was it, it brought a smile to my face because they could get yeah. away with it because it was shot in black and white. Again, I thought it was great. I loved it. I wanted to see more. I wish they would have made it into a series, but I think that you know they're going to actually make it into a series sooner rather than later because I'm sure a lot of fans absolutely loved it. I mean, what did you think about? werewolf by night if you saw that and did you see the new hellraiser i i saw werewolf by night i have yet to see the new hellraiser but i'm it's on my watch list i'm gonna watch it 
but I'm not really running out to see it just because the originals were good. I like the originals, but it wasn't anything that ever caught my attention. Yeah. Pinhead was kind of like, you know, I, it's kind of like that my old uncle or something that I've got. And, you know, he's got the crater face and all. So I was like, oh, he was terrifying enough. In person. The, the stupid thing, though, with Hellraiser is why do they keep playing the damn puzzle? Put the puzzle down. Yeah, that's the part. I mean, if I'm getting terrorized because I'm putting a thousand piece Star Wars puzzle together, I'm. I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah, put it down, so, walk away. And then it, it made me afraid of Rubik's Cubes as well. Oh, so I don't, I don't want to have anything like that. Um, that's why I never <laughs> solved them. I figured they were going to pop out and just kill take everybody. Just the sticker. Just take yeah, that's why you never solved them. Yeah, not yeah. that I wasn't smart enough, but I just never solved them for that. With uh, Werewolf by Night, just real quick, with the scene they got me that I loved on it was when he was killing guards and you saw the spider hit the camera. And it wouldn't yeah. like they didn't clean it off. They just yeah, did it again and there. more splatter. And I was like, "Holy cow! This is the image that I want to see if I'm looking at a movie. Like, oh wow, that's awesome. That's amazing. The story was perfect. Mm -hmm. I love that they introduced Man Thing. I love you know that you got everything else. I didn't quite understand how David Bowie got in the actual <laughs> Werewolf by Night. Uh, for those of <laughs> you that have seen it, the guy dressed in all white there, um, but. I, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. I wanted more. I'm looking forward to the uh, the crossover that they're probably talking with with Moon Knight coming yeah. up here. Season two got announced, I think, today. Season two of Moon Knight. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm ready for it. Superb. And what did you think, Ben? Did you see Werewolf by Night yet? All right. Well, I haven't seen Hellraiser. I have zero intention of watching it. I don't do scary <laughs> movies for the most part. You must not I like Rubik's like cubes Werewolf. either. <laughs> no, I don't like Rubik's cubes for a number of reasons. Um. Too too symmetrical. Yeah, yeah. But Werewolf by Night, I thought was fantastic. Um, Love those characters they introduced. Werewolf by Night, uh, Man Thing, and Elsa Bloodstone. Man Thing alias is alias is Ted. Ted. Yeah, which was, <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. I'm like, oh, they named him Ted. Fantastic. Even <laughs> we, we need to. Yeah, we need to see some more Ted, man. But yeah, I'm, I assume you loved it as well as you just said. Yeah, it was it was great. I thought. Uh, I mean, they might be setting up something for Moon Knight Season 2, but with Blade coming out at some point, uh, they could be setting up the Midnight Suns. Yeah, it could be. Which, if you if they do that, they could potentially pivot them into a movie, which <laughs> might be even better. Yeah. So we're up against the clock here. Rudy's got to go. We can't keep him out here any longer. He's got to got to go do some family things here. So as yeah. we start bringing this show to a close, Ben, where can they follow you on the Twitters? Of course, at the underscore Boomstein. There, you can bring all the heat you got for Ben too. Any prospect watch, you know, prospects that you might have questions on. Ben is your guy. He is the guy for all things college basketball. So send your questions to Ben. Great follow on Twitter. And also make sure you go ahead and check out all the great articles he writes for Project Spurs. And you can check that out at ProjectSpurs.com. And Rudy, where can they follow you? And all the great things that you all got going over there at Sweep the League, man. I've been listening to your episodes. I love them. I love Appreciate I love everything that you guys are doing. And I like the producing that Shemaya's done. It's been on point. Yeah. I, on Twitter, you can follow me at Sweep the League. Uh, you can pretty much all my all my posts on Twitter, where you'll see everybody on the crew from Candice Avila Garcia to The Rock himself, who's a part of Project Spurs as well. Shamar on the beats. Derek Gervin, that's right, George Gervin's brother. Derek Gervin is a part of us as well. Mark Stats himself. It's just we talk a lot of football right now. We're talking basketball since basketball season is right around the corner. It's just a whole lot of fun. Joe and Ben and everybody, you know, they all, they've all been a part of it at some point. And it's just a good, good laughs all around. We have a great time. So right now we're talking football a lot right now. Uh, we were talking pillow talk with Tom Brady last night. And that kind of got a little into – how Kyrie Irving is not the smartest guy in the NBA, I think. Now, I don't know how that went there, but wow, we tend to go off the rails and then go back on the rails somehow. But, yeah, definitely give us a follow. We are uh, at Sweep the League. We can go wherever podcasts are available. Look us up and download the episodes and subscribe. There you go. Make sure you go follow Rudy at Sweep the League on Twitter and make sure you subscribe to his podcast because – the guys there, they're doing a great job. So it's something that you don't want to miss. And it's very entertaining, especially when it goes off the rails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always. 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 And you can also follow us over Two Shots. You know, we're on Twitter. We're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere at Two Shots Podcast. So for Rudy Campos Jr. and Benjamin Bornstein, I'm Joe Garcia. Thank you guys for watching and listening. 
to another episode of the Two Shots Podcast. And like we always say, spread the love, stop the hate, be kind, we're out, peace.